Hi, Lee Ellis here with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Well, this month is kind of special because in the last six weeks, I've been to two funerals of great leaders. Leaders who were friends, peers, and especially both of them had been my boss twice. So I'd known them for more than 40 years. These were amazing men, amazing leaders. Uh, both were a little older than me. One was five or six years older. The other one was about 10 years older. But we were together, and I saw in them so much that I admired and so much that I wanted in my own leadership. So today I want us to think about the role of mentors in our lives and the role that we can play as mentors and the legacy of leadership and character and courage that we can leave for others by showing them the way. Well, these guys did. And I want to tell you, first of all, this month about Colonel Richard E. O'Grady, Dick O'Grady. Now, this is a redheaded Irishman from Iowa. You know, we started flying together in the, in the late 70s in the same squadron. But he was senior to me, and uh, along the way, he became my commander. But right away in the late 70s, we started hunting together, and we would drive to southern Iowa to his old home place there where his mom and dad were, and a group of us would come together and go pheasant hunting. And those are great memories, great pictures I still look at. Well, I had the opportunity to go back to Iowa just two weeks ago, and spend two days with him, three days before he passed. We call it flying west in the Air Force. He flew west. What a great man and a great leader. And as we talked about with his family and friends, we all saw the consistency of his character. He was so committed to doing the right thing that he was fearless about it. Now to him, he would say it's not courage. Like the POWs, you know, we just did our duty. And he would say it was his commitment to do the right thing and to do his duty that drove him. So it was courage from the outside. It looked like courage. It's the kind of courage that we all need. Very courageous. And I can remember so many times when there was a hard situation. As I said, I worked for him twice when he was the commander of large units. And I was his number two guy uh, both times. So I saw him up close. He would take on the toughest of situations, sort it out in his head, come talk to me about it, and then press on and go deal with it. I've seen him reach up and confront his leaders. I've seen him reach down and confront people. But most of all, uh, it was always fair and balanced. The balanced part was he was very caring. This guy was optimistic. He was positive. He brought energy to every environment, a big smile on his face. He loved to have fun. And that whole uh, motif of his created an atmosphere that you wanted to be around. It was enlightening and uplifting, but he really cared about people. He knew not only his people well, but he knew the spouses of everybody in the squadron. He knew the names of their kids even. He was that involved with people. In some ways, he really wasn't an extrovert, but yet he was because he was connected to people in a very personal way. So his courage was outstanding. His connection with people was amazing. And yet he could confront. And he confronted anyone that needed to be confronted. He didn't walk by it if it needed to be confronted. And so I learned that from him that it wasn't about, you didn't have to get angry, you didn't have to be rude, you just pulled somebody aside and gave correction and discussed it. Maybe you had to understand it better and say, well, help me understand what this is about and why, why were you doing that? And that's not quite the way we normally handle things around here. In fact, our standards are we go this way. So he had that ability to be both caring and confronting. You know, that's the paradox of leadership, one of them one of the many, that you can do both, confront and care. And when you can do that, people know that you're really a person of character and they want to be around you and they want to follow you. Well, I really, uh, I thought so much of him and his example always encouraged me. And one of the main things about Dick O'Grady was he was consistent. As we were sharing at the night of viewing before his funeral the next day, four or five speakers, family, friends, and two military. And the one thing that came through loud and clear, aside from his great character and integrity, was his consistency. 
He was always focused on doing the right thing. He was always caring. He was always tough. You could depend on him. And that just made him a great friend, a great leader, and someone that I really learned so much from. Now, if you've read my book, Leading with Honor, and probably in Engage with Honor, too, I talk about O'Gradyisms, things about leadership that I learned from Colonel Dick O'Grady. Uh, that was a great legacy for me. I hope that uh, these stories will be a great legacy for you, and I hope that you'll always guard your character, that you'll respond courageously out of duty, if nothing else, that you'll be caring and confronting and that you will be compassionate with people and leave that legacy behind of someone who was consistent. That's the kind of person I want to be. It's a battle. I'm working on it every day. Well, next month, we'll look at Colonel Don Ellis. No relationship, but my boss twice and also my friend for more than 40 years who recently passed away. I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll check out the blog on this subject and join us every month for the Leading with Honor Coaching.